Firewalls protect your network by assigning resources into zones. Traffic can be allowed or denied between these zones. A Palo Alto firewall takes this concept and builds on it with advanced features, which we'll take a look at here. Before the advanced stuff, we should take a look at what zones actually are. In a traditional firewall, security rules in the form of an access control list are applied to interfaces. Each interface can have one ACL applied for inbound traffic and one for outbound traffic. When traffic enters or leaves this interface, it is checked against the ACL and allowed or denied. This makes the traditional firewall behave much like a router. Zone-based firewalls take a different approach. They view the network in terms of zones or areas. These areas may be trusted or untrusted and can contain one or more physical or virtual interfaces. Security policies are applied to traffic that passes between different zones. For example, you might have a zone that's connected to the internet, a DMZ zone, and a zone that's connected to your local LAN. Traffic is evaluated as it passes from one zone to another. A different set of security policies may even be applied to traffic that's passing within the zone, for example, between different servers. A further advantage is if you have more than one firewall, managed centrally with something like Panorama. The firewalls can have the same zones, which means they can have the same security and NAT policies applied based on the zone. Zones make firewalls more flexible. Not only can we mix and match interfaces within a zone, but we can create different types of zones. A tap zone is used with span traffic, also known as port mirroring. That's where you send a copy of all traffic to an external device running Wireshark or some other packet capturing tool. The virtual wire zone is quite interesting. This is where we pair two interfaces together and pass traffic across them. It's like joining two cables together with a transparent firewall in between. This is sometimes called a bump in the wire. In a layer two zone, the firewall acts like a switch, but still applies security policies to traffic passing through it. Interfaces in a layer two zone do not have IP addresses configured on them. A layer three zone is probably the most common. This is where interfaces are configured with IP addresses, so the firewall can act a bit like a router. You need to consider routing protocols, either dynamic or static, with this zone type. And finally, there's the external zone type. This is used if you have multi vSys enabled. That is, the firewall is partitioned into multiple virtual instances. This is more complicated and is beyond the scope of this video. When we create zones, we add interfaces to them. An interface can be a member of one zone only. However, a zone can have several interfaces, including interfaces of different types. By default, all traffic is allowed within a zone. This is called intrazone traffic. Traffic between different zones, called interzone traffic, is denied by default. Of course, we can change all of this using security policies. The only real rule here is that for passing traffic between zones, those two zones have to be of the same type. For example, both layer three zones. Most of what we've talked about is fairly common to all vendors. They might have different names or abilities, but the concepts are fairly similar. But on a Palo Alto firewall, there are a few more advanced features, one of which is a zone protection profile. The point of this profile is to protect the zone from common attacks. This is similar to DOS protection, but is focused on the health of the whole zone, not just a particular server. Flood protection looks out for a flood of packets of a particular type. For example, too many TCP SIM packets, which could represent a DOS attack. This works by setting alarm, activate, and maximum values, which are measured in packets per second across the entire zone. When the activate value is reached, random early drop is activated, which starts dropping a few packets from an offending session. As the packet rate increases, red drops more and more packets. By the time the rate reaches the maximum threshold, red is dropping all packets from these offending sessions. Reconnaissance protection looks out for things like port scans and host sweeps. There's quite a lot of options in here. The actions we configure are allow, alert, block, and block IP. If we use block IP, the source or source destination combination is entirely blocked for a while. Palo Alto have best practice recommendations on their site for all these settings if you want to work through these on your own firewall. Packet-based attack prevention looks for packets that aren't quite right. This includes source spoofing, RPF, 
ICMP fragmentation, and so on. These are configured as a series of drop profiles. And finally, protocol protection can be applied to traffic within a zone. This is a relatively new feature, which allows or denies non-IP traffic. This might include traffic like LLDP, CDP, and things of this nature. Some of these features will add load to the firewall CPU and memory, so make sure you monitor it well. The other advanced feature that Palo Alto adds is packet buffer protection. Network devices have a buffer where packets are stored before they are processed. A single session DOS attack aims to overwhelm the packet buffer, filling it so no legitimate packets can be processed. When packet buffer protection is enabled, the firewall monitors traffic in all zones and how they are using the packet buffer. Just like the zone protection profile, these are a series of threshold values. These are configured globally. When the packet buffer starts filling up, red will start dropping packets from the offending sessions. Once the thresholds are enabled globally, the feature is enabled on each individual zone or just on the zones that you want it on. If it's not enabled on a zone, red will not drop packets from that zone. I hope you have found this to be a good introduction to both zone-based firewalls and the advanced features that make this approach worthwhile. I hope to see you again soon.